Flat Bear. Are you ready? We're howdy. It's time for Maths with Mr. Thomas. Here we go with chapter 10, lesson number 4, matrix multiplication. We're going to be multiplying matrices together. Before that, though, something you really need to know is the order of matrices. You have to understand that. So, a quick reminder, a matrix with M rows and N columns is said to have order M by N. This matrix here, matrix A, what would the order of that be, Avina? Perfect. That there, it's got two rows, so it would be order two by, and there are three columns, so that would be a two by three matrix. Avina, perfect. Really, a matrix product AB can only be formed if the number of columns of matrix A, so in this case it would be three because there's three columns, that has to be the same as the number of rows of matrix B. So, if A is of the order M by N, then matrix B, in order to multiply A and B together, you would have to have matrix B being of the order N by P. So what I'm saying is these two numbers would have to be equal. If that is the case, you can multiply the matrices together and the resulting matrix will be of order, well, that's going to be your other numbers. So that would be M by P. I'll show you with some examples, but in order to multiply matrices together, what you do is to find the entry in row I and column J of matrix AB. So if you wanted to find this entry here in row 1, column 1, you would multiply the first row of matrix A by the first column of matrix B. So you would multiply the entries together. So you would do 1 times 7, the 2 times 9, and the 3 times 11, and add these numbers together. Let's look at that with some examples. So, example 1, let A be 1, 2, 3, 4, and let matrix B be 2, 5, 1, 3. So first of all, can you multiply these matrices together? Well, yes, you can, because A is of the order 2 by 2, and B is of the order 2 by 2. So matrix A is of order 2 by 2, matrix B is of the order 2 by 2. What you always need to make sure is that these numbers beside one another are, are equal. If they are equal, you can multiply the matrices together. The resulting matrix will just be the other numbers. So the resulting matrix here will be a 2 by 2 matrix. So we can set this up. We can write down one matrix beside the other. So matrix A was the 1, 2, 3, 4. Matrix B was the 2, 5, 1, 3. We know we're going to have a 2 by 2 matrix, so there's going to be two rows and two columns. To find this entry here in the first row and the first column, what you do is you multiply the first row by the first column. So you would do the 1 times the 2, add on the 2 times 1. To find the next entry, so to get this entry here, which is in the first row and the second column, you would multiply the first row by the second column. So you do the 1 times the 5 and the 2 times the 3. To find this entry here, well this entry here is in the second row and the first column. So for that one there, you would multiply the second row by the first column. So you would do the 3 times 2, add on the 4 times 1. To get this entry here, which is in the second row and second column, you would multiply the second row, which is still that 3, 4, by the second column. So 3 times 5, add on the 4 times 3. If you do that, that will give you the result of, we'll just work that out, the top row would become 4 and 11, and the bottom row would become 10 and 27. And that is what you would get if you multiply the matrices A times B. Also, if you decided to flip that, if you had the matrix BA, well, that's when you take matrix B and you multiply it by matrix A. So BA, make sure you set up that right way around. So matrix B was the 2, 5, 1, 3. Matrix A was the 1, 2, 3, 4. Once again, you know that this matrix here is a 2 by 2 matrix. So I'm just writing that out very slowly. 2 by 2 matrix. And this one here is a 2 by 2 matrix. Because you have 
the 2 and the 2 in the middle, you know you can multiply the matrices together. The resulting matrix, again, is the other numbers, so that will be a 2 by 2 matrix that you end up with. So we've got a 2 by 2 matrix, which means then that the entry in the first row and the first column, that is found by multiplying the first row by the first column. So you'd have 2 times 1, add on the 5 times 3. To get the entry in the first row and the second column, where well, you would multiply the first row by the second column. So you'd have 2 times 2, add on the 5 times 4. To get this entry here, which is in the second row and the first column, where well, you would multiply the second row by the first column. So there's the second row and the first column. So 1 times 1, add on 3 times 3. To get this entry in the second row and the second column, you'd multiply the second row by the second column. That means you will end up with, for your answer if you work that out, 17 and 24 for the top row and 10 and 14 for the second row. What do you notice about this? Well, if you work out A times B, we get the 4, 11, 10, 27. And if we flip that and work out B times A, we don't get the same thing. Really, AB and BA are not equal. And really, that is true in general for the matrices A and B. It means that the order when you multiply them, if you're doing A times B or B times A, it's very important. Also, if you do end up with them being the same, so if AB was the same as BA, then you would say that the matrices A and B commute. Let's try another example. Example 2, let matrix A be the 2, negative 1, 3 and 2. And let matrix B be 4, negative 2. So looking at matrix A, we can see that is a 2 by 2 matrix. Matrix B, we can see number of rows, there are 2. And the number of columns, there is 1, so that's a 2 by 1 matrix. It means we can multiply them together because these numbers, the 2 and the 2, they are the same. The resulting matrix in this case will be the other numbers, so that's a 2 and 1. So we will end up with a 2 by 1 matrix. So matrix product can be found since A is of the order 2 by 2, B is of the order 2 by 1, and the resulting matrix AB will be of the order 2 times 1. That means AB can be found, so matrix A was 2, negative 1, 3, 2, so we're writing that down. We're putting matrix B beside it with 4, negative 2. We know the result of matrix is of order 2 by 1, so there are 2 rows and 1 column. In order to find this entry here, well, this entry is in the first row, and it's in the first column. So we want to multiply that first row by the first column. So if we do that, we would have 2 times 4, add on negative 1 times negative 2. If we want to find this entry here, which is in the second row and the first column, we'd multiply the second row by the first column. So for that, we'd have 3 times 4, add on 2 times negative 2. Working that out, and we get 10, 8. So that will be your answer. Just double check that this matrix is of order 2 by 1, which it is. If we wanted to reverse that, could we find the matrix product BA? Brian Adams, could we find that? Well, if you think about it, matrix B is still of the order 2 by 1. And matrix A is of order 2 by 2. So if we were to work out B times A, well, these numbers here are different. And if it's different, it means we cannot find the matrix product. So here, BA cannot be found since B is of the order 2 by 1 and A is of the order 2 by 2. And these numbers here, which have to be the same, are different. Example 3, let P be 4, 3, negative 1, 2. And let matrix Q be 2, 4, 5, 6, 1, negative 2. So, once again, can you multiply these matrices together? Well, matrix P, what is the order? Well, that there is a 2 by 2 matrix. And matrix Q, what is the order of that? What is it, Max? Good. There are two rows and there are three columns. So that is a 2 by 3 matrix. Again, you need to have these numbers in the middle being equal in order to multiply them together. So we've got a 2 and a 2. That's fine. So we can multiply them together. The resulting matrix... 
Well, what are we left with? We're left with a two and a three, so the resulting matrix will be a two by three matrix. So because we can multiply them together, we're going to write down, well, matrix P was a 4, 3, negative 1, 2, and matrix Q, the 2, 4, 5, 6, 1, negative 2, and we can multiply them. Because we've got a 2 by 3 matrix, we know the result will have two rows and one, two, three columns. Working our way along in order to work out this entry here, well, this entry is in the first row and the first column. So we want to multiply the first row by the first column. So we have 4 times 2, add on 3 times 6. To get the next entry, well this entry here is still in the first row, but it's in the second column. So we want to multiply that first row by the second column. So it's 4 times 4, add on 3 times 1. For the next entry, well this one here is in the first row in the third column, so we want to multiply that first row by the third column. So 4 times 5, add on 3 times negative 2. Moving down a row, well this row is now the second row, but it's the first column. So to get that entry, we want to multiply the second row by the first column. So it's negative 1 times 2, add on 2 times 6. For the next entry here, well that is in the second row and the second column. So we are multiplying the second row by the second column. So negative 1 times 4, add on 2 times 1. And for the last one, well this one here is in the second row and the third column. So we want to take that second row and multiply by the third column. So negative 1 times 5, add on 2 times negative 2. Working that out, that gives us, for the top row, 26, 19 and 14, and the bottom row, 10, negative 2 and negative 9. Woo! And that is our answer. Once again, if we were asked to work out the matrix product QP, could we find that? Well, matrix Q would be of the order 2 by 3, and matrix P is of the order 2 by 2. These numbers here, the numbers that have to be the same in order to find the product, are different. Bam, bam, bam. And if they are different, we cannot find the matrix product. So here, once again, QP cannot be found since Q is of the order 2 by 3, P is of the order 2 by 2, and these numbers here in the middle that have to be the same are different. Example 4, given the 2 by 2 matrix M, 3, negative 2, 0, 3, find the matrices M squared, M cubed, and M to the power of 4. Woo! So, working out M squared, first of all, can we work out M squared? Well, yes, we can, because we know matrix M is a 2 by 2 matrix. We know if we're multiplying that by matrix M, we're multiplying it by itself, so we're multiplying it by a 2 by 2 matrix. The numbers in the middle, which have to be the same, they will be the same, so we can work out M squared. The resulting matrix, the other numbers, well, we've got a 2 and a 2, so we know the result will be a 2 by 2 matrix. So, that's going to be M times M, so it's a 3, negative 2, 0, 3, multiplied by itself. The result is a 2 by 2 matrix, so we're going to set that out, 2 by 2 matrix. To work out this entry, which is in the first row and the first column, we're going to multiply the first row by the first column. So 3 times 3, add on negative 2 times 0. To get this entry here, which is in the first row and the second column, we want to multiply that first row by the second column. So 3 times negative 2, add on negative 2 times 3. Moving down a row to get this entry here, which is in the second row and the first column, we multiply the second row by the first column. So 0 times 3, add on 3 times 0. And finally, this entry here, well, that's in the second row and the second column. So we multiply the second row by the second column. So 0 times negative 2, add on 3 times 3. Working that out, that gives us a result of 9, negative 12 for the top row. And the bottom row, we've got 0, 9. So that is the matrix M squared. M cubed to work that out. We can work out that different ways. We could work out M squared times M. We could do M times M squared. What I'm doing here is M times M squared. So that is matrix M. 
This is the matrix M squared, and if we can multiply them together. Once again, we should always really do that check. We know matrix M is a two by two matrix. We know M squared, well you can see that's also a two by two matrix. The numbers in the middle to multiply matrices have to be the same. So we've got a two and a two, so we can work that out. And the resulting matrix, well we're left with a two and a two, so we'll have a two by two matrix. To work out this entry, well this entry here is in the first row and the first column, so we multiply the first row by the first column. So three times nine are on negative two times zero. This entry here, well this is in the first row and it's in the second column. So we multiply that first row by the second column. I should do that in a different color to multiply the first row and the second column. So three times negative 12 add on the negative two times nine. After that, if we want to work out the next entry, so to work out this one here, well this entry here is in the second row and it's in the first column. So we multiply the second row, there's the second row, by the first column. So zero times nine add on three times zero. To work out this entry here in the second row, second column, multiply the second row by the second column. So zero times negative 12 add on three times nine. Working that out and that gives us for the matrix M cubed, 27, negative 54, zero and 27. Woo, so worked out N cubed. To work out m to the power of four, you can work that out in different ways as well. I'm gonna work out m times m cubed. You could also work out m squared times m squared or m cubed times m. Really working that out, matrix m was three, negative two, zero, three. m cubed was a 27, negative 54, zero, 27. And once again, just doing that check, well, matrix m is a two by two matrix. Matrix m cubed, that's also a two by two matrix. The numbers in the middle have to be the same. So these here, there's a two and a two, so that's absolutely fine. And the resultant matrix will be two by two. So to work out this entry here, this entry here is in the first row and the first column. So we're going to multiply that first row by the first column. So we've got three times 27 add on negative two times zero. This entry here, which is in the first row and the second column, to get that, we'd multiply the first row by the second column. So three times negative 54 add negative two times 27. For this entry here, that's in the second row and the first column, so we multiply the second row, woo, by the first column. So zero times 27 add on three times zero. And for the final entry in the second row, second column, second row, second column. So we multiply the second row by the second column. So zero times negative 54 add on three times 27. And that means for m to the power of four, we will end up with 81, negative 216 and zero and 81. And that will be the matrix m to the power of four. Try some of these questions in the Unit 3 booklet, pages 13 to 15. Check your answers as you go. If there's any problems, let me know. Best of luck. Have fun. Bye. Woo! Yeah.